Welcome to GCN Shop. So. Yeah. Ah, no. <laughs> Bienvenido. Ah, finito. Al GCN Shop. Ah. It's better. Need more training, eh? Hello, coming up on today's show, we round up all of the national championships which took place both on the road and in cyclocross, plus we've got a great competition for you where you can win a bike. Yeah, and don't forget all our regulars such as Tweet, Tech, Caption and Comment of the Week and we've also got some more big numbers in our Strava Club. Now last week many of you will remember that we asked you to like the video if you wanted to see Matt put his comb to good effect and back comb his hair, but despite many likes, almost 3,000, as you can see, he's done a runner. See? Oh, ah, come on! Let's go! He's in Sicily with Tinko Saxo. Oh, wow. It's Tinko Saxo? That's pretty cool. He's live. He's live? No. I can't, I can't hear him. No. Hello? Yes, and. Cheers, Dan. We're here live uh, on the slopes, the beautiful slopes of Mount Ten in Sicily at the Tinkoff Saxo training camp. And over the next few days, we're going to be filming some superb new content for you with Alberto Consor, Peter Sagan, and of course, the rest of the team. Those videos, of course, are coming soon. But for now, here's a sneak peek at the 2015 bike. Let's take a quick look. As you can see, brand new colour scheme for 2015. Black with the fluo yellow, the trademark of Corp, course of Tinkoff Saxo. This is uh, Robert Kivalowski's bike. The first thing you'll notice, apart from the new colour scheme, of course, is the Rovar wheels and Shimano Di2 throughout. More coming soon. Oh, this man. is not crazy, man. You are not professional. You need training more. I was a professional ten years ago. <sighs> <sighs> no, in all seriousness, actually, Matt was fully geared up. To sort out his barnet but unfortunately he did actually have a bit of a crash so uh, get well soon Matt. <laughs> Look at him! I thought, I thought we were supposed to wince at that bit. I know we were supposed to wince but that's the first time I've seen it and that was my reaction. <laughs> yeah, that's quite fine. <laughs> I'd laugh at that! As mentioned last week, the first of the road national championships took place at the weekend. In New Zealand, it was Linda Willemsen of United Healthcare who took the women's road race, whilst Joseph Cooper led an Avanti 1-2-3 in the men's race. And over in Australia, Richie Port put in a stunning performance to take the men's time trial. He overcame a 32-second deficit at the halfway point to Rowan Dennis. Now, Dennis, despite going into the red, managed to hold on to second over Jack Bobridge. Both those riders, you'll remember, are about to tackle the hour record, and both are talking up their form off the back of that result. In the women's event, it was Rabo Liv's Shara Gillow who took her fourth national time trial title over a minute ahead of the rest of the field. And in the road race, it was actually mountain biker Peter Mullins who took the win. Now, that performance was enough for her to sign a one-year deal with former sponsor Wiggle Honda for 2015. Hopefully, she got a bit of a pay rise out of that. Now, the Australian Nationals finished, of course, with the men's road race, and Orica Greenedge was somewhat up against it this year without the reigning champion Simon Gerrans there due to his broken collarbone. But young Caleb Ewan stepped up to the mark, and he managed to get himself into the decisive break, even attacking the last time up the climb. However, ultimately, he was caught by a small group, and it was Heinrich Hausler of IAM Cycling who took the win in quite fine style. So fine, in fact, he didn't actually have a chain when he crossed the line. I know, he's on great form. Yeah, that's flying couldn't, form. Couldn't feel his chain. Caption competition now, and the results from last week's photo. Congratulations to Simply X Epic. This is an excellent caption. After digging for hours, the search party's hopes of rescuing Matt from his latest cyclocross crash were shrinking. His instantly recognisable cackle that had originally alerted them to his position grew fainter. Cyclocross was just one step too far for this wig on wheels. <laughs> OK, this week's photo comes from Etix Quick Steps photo shoot with Tim Dewala, and it's this one of Tom Bowden. I shall get you started. No, Tom, you're supposed to rub the balloon on your head and then put the balloon on the ceiling, not your head. Uh, if you want to enter that competition, just stick your comment in the comment section below the video. Good luck. 
as well as the road nationals, it was also the cyclocross national championships for most of Europe and also the US. Well, sort of the US, because actually the Blue Ribbon events, which were due to take place on Sunday, were actually cancelled due to um, excessive mud. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the Belgians had no such luck. Their race at Erpa Mea was just about the slowest, toughest race of the season so far. The senior men, in fact, were averaging only about 14k an hour. Whoa. Class Van Tour now overcame a virus which he'd had to deal with over the Christmas period. In the silver medal position was Tom Muirson, and in the bronze, it was Wout Van Aert. Yeah, and in the women's race, Sonna can't show that she still does have great form, despite not being on the podium all that much over Christmas and New Year. She defended her title. Now, in other notable national championships, one of those was in the Netherlands. The youngster Matthew van der Poel beat his brother David into second place, whilst, somewhat unsurprisingly, Mariana Vos took her fourth title. In France, world road race champion Pauline ferrand Prevot successfully defended her cyclocross national title. Unlike Francie Mori in the men's race, he could only finish third to Clément Lotellerie. Not quite as good as your first take, actually. No. L'hotellerie. That's better. Clément. Wrong way around. Clément L'hotellerie. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Cool. <clears throat> Dialed. Tech of the Week makes a welcome return this week in the form of these new pedals, which are quite innovative, from Nicola. Yeah, what separates these from anything else on the market is that the main body of the pedal can move freely on the axle. Ow. Yep, the manufacturers claim that in some Wingate tests over 30 seconds conducted at the Cleveland State University that the average improvement was 7% with a net efficiency improvement of 2%. Yeah, those improvements supposedly come from the fact that that lateral movement recruits your adductors and your glute muscles far more than a standard pedal. Now these literally just landed in the GCN offices today, so we haven't actually had a chance to ride them ourselves just yet, but we will do so soon, so stay tuned for an update. You know, I was thinking, mate, if they build up your glute muscles, that means you might actually have an ass, as opposed to just like, just nothing. As opposed to being one. <laughs> Competition time now. We're too good to you. Now, if you head over to our Facebook page, then you can win this really quite nice Vitus bike. You might remember it actually because Dan technically built this for a, a video not so long ago. So if you do win it, just be very careful. What do you mean? This is something that you might need to adjust more at a later point, perhaps after you've been riding. Get next to the saddle. You should have some idea roughly where you want these hoods to be. This is all on camera. Last week in New York, Cannondale Garmin had their team launch, revealing a brand new look for the Slipstream outfit. Surprisingly, they went for black as their main colour, presumably just to make themselves stand out from the uh, rest of the 2015 Peloton. Yeah, in all seriousness, I do really like the kit and I really love the bikes, but I just wonder whether Velon or one of the other conglomerations of teams perhaps should have got together before all the kits were designed and maybe allocated colours to teams so we didn't have quite so many black kits. It will make it far easier for fans to identify with the teams, I would have thought. Yeah, maybe they could have suggested that, um, that Sky went with Colour of the Sky, which, uh, as they're registered in the UK, could have been dark grey. Mm, that would have been novel. Yeah. Time for our Strava Club now, and the big news this week is that Stephen Abraham has joined our club. So thank you to whoever got in touch with him and told him to get on the case. Yeah, you might remember from last week that Steve is attempting the most distance covered in a year world record. Now, it's been held since 1939 by Tommy Godwin, and it's an incredible 75,000 miles in a year. By our reckoning, Steve should probably win most of the distance covered awards in our Strava Club this year, but not this week. That goes to Cycle Doctor number one, who just pipped him with 2,235 kilometres ridden over 10 rides this week. Impressive. Now, if we break down Stephen's stats for last week, it's pretty incredible. An average per day of just over 177 miles, which is 286 kilometres just under, but his average speed was under 22 k's per hour. So that meant that he did a total of 92 hours in the saddle, which works out as an average of 13, or more than 13 hours every single day. Marcelo Soares went for the longest ride, just shy of 350 kilometres in one go. And we think that in the climbing competition, there might be something a little bit off with Ian Gillen's altitude stats. So we're going to give it to Sindra Haugsveer, who climbed 27,000 metres in a week in Tenerife. 
I do like how Steve and Abraham has just joined our Stark Strava Club and you're already calling him Steve. Well, well it feels like we're old mates. Mm. I don't suppose you'll have time to see the show anyway, so you'll be all right. No, and whoever wrote the script said Steve. It's just... People often mention, where is Tom last? What do you actually do when you're not presenting? Now, last Saturday was a big moment here on GCN and for you viewers as well, because it was Tom last presenter's video. And actually, comment of the week comes from below that video. That's right. Michael McDermott said, thanks, Tom. I really enjoyed that. Hopefully, you'll be presenting more often this year, which I think you will. Incidentally, if Dan Mann handles you like that again, I'll have a word. Boss or no boss. Yeah, Dan. Oh. Yeah. Mine was a joke. Yeah, that was... Uh, Quite passionate. <clears throat> well, uh, I'm the boss for sure, but Dan is a very good mate of, mate of mine. Coming up on the channel this week, on Wednesday we're going to show you how to ride faster, faster on climbs to nail that king of the mountains, faster on descents to get a new maximum speed, or faster average speeds, covering bigger distances quicker. On Thursday we're going to give you our top 10 things which we think that cyclists should eat and drink. First on our list is porridge, or oatmeal. Now this is a firm favourite, especially amongst pro teams, for good reason. And that's because oats are very low on the glycemic index. And what that basically means is that they give a slow, steady release of energy. And on Friday, we're going to give you all of the 2015 World Tour team kits. Mm. And on Saturday, we've got Alberto Contador's specialised tarmac. And on Sunday, we've got our usual trip through the GCM vaults, pulling out the best videos that you might not have seen over the past couple of years. And then on Monday, we've got how to index your front derailleur. Or mech. Do room but Tweet of the week this week comes from Team Roompot NL, who obviously watched our show last week. They said, great idea at GCN Tweet. The Crater's doing a special Roompot version of Mbot by Hansen. We'll need an extra training camp. Yeah, now we think you should probably get involved in this as well. So to lend a bit of weight to our Roompot campaign, head over to their Twitter feed, which is at Team Roompot NL, and why don't you favourite that tweet Show them that really the creators need to get in the recording studio. Go on, please do it. Room pot. Yeah, please, that would be great. Room pot. Now, you've been admiring for some months now the GCN t shirts. I'm not surprised Dan does make them look very good indeed. And you can now buy them. So if you click on the description of this video, then you can head over to our online store and get your very own t-shirts, sweatshirts, or GCN mugs. Yeah, they come in a variety of colors, and the t-shirts actually even come in pink, and they've got some fantastic qualities. They wick away moisture from your body. If you do buy a pink t-shirt, good luck. As has become custom, we are going to leave you all with Extreme Corner, which this week comes to you live and direct from Sicily at the Tinkoff Saxo Cab. It is Brumotti and Peter Sagan doing a wheelie. Oh, sorry. It's incredible. Look at that, folks. Yeah. Unbelievable. Such a gentleman as well. After. Now, if you want to see more of Matt Stevens crashing, but without hurting himself this time, then why don't you watch our compilation by clicking it up there. Yeah, oh, nasty. If you'd like to see my presenter video, which you absolutely must not miss, click down there. And if you want to become a fan of the channel and subscribe to us, just click on us. Don't manhandle him. Dan? Where's your t-shirt? Is he allowed on here with that? Woolly jumper. It's a nice knit. This is a really nice knit. Have they got a close with your socks? Sorry, they have got a close with my socks. I'm admiring them over there. It's quite a look. Mum's socks, Dad's shoes, and Granny's knees. 